On May 29, 2023, when the newly inaugurated President and Commanding Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria takes over the mantle of leadership, he will be confronted with a daunting housing shortfall of over 22 million. How can the real estate sector contribute to the growth of the economy and GDP? How can more private sector participation be encouraged? For the provision of low-cost houses to be achieved. This and more we analyze with stakeholders on the program today. I am Flora Arnie, your housing diva. Let's get to see the news making rounds in the sector. I'll be back in a moment. Housing is so critical for economic growth and development because of its impact on major macroeconomic indicators such as employment, savings, investment and labor productivity. Hence, Housing Development Advocacy Network, HDAN, a leading and pioneer non-governmental organization, has lamented the failure of government to tackle the challenge of access to affordable housing in Nigeria. A statement signed by the executive director of HDAN, Festus Adebayo, in Abuja, noted that while the federal government under former president Gulag Jonathan had made appreciable efforts in its bid to provide affordable housing, President Muhammad Buhari, on the other hand, has since 2015 done less than required to change the narrative in this regard. Adebayo lamented the current situation where housing is not part of the first five top priority areas, stating that it was appalling as it remains the most compelling index in measuring the growth of the economy in developed countries like America and not oil. According to him, the government must really take effective action on the issue because housing should not be a mere political stunt and the incoming administration has to be committed to improve the welfare of citizens by implementing resilient and decent housing initiatives. The persistent cash crunch occasioned by the Central Bank of Nigeria's policy on the Naira redesign and cash withdrawal limits has abruptly stopped economic and service delivery in the real estate environment. This was as property developers who spoke to our correspondents insisted that the inability to pay artisans provide building materials for construction and increased cost of production had halted any form of revenue generation in the industry. They further predicted that this might affect the sector's gross domestic product contribution and lead to an increase in housing deficits. The Central Bank of Nigeria in October 2022 announced a new Naira policy that will see the 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes redesigned and replaced with new ones. The old notes were expected to cease to be legal tender on January 31, 2023. Nigeria is set to benefit from a $274 million long-term financing announced by the United States Proper Africa Initiative targeted at helping to build West Africa's rapidly growing housing sector. The $274 million financing is expected to open new opportunities for U.S. investments in Africa's emerging markets and provide a revenue for West Africans to gain greater access to home ownership. MIDA Advisors served as the originator and lead transaction advisor on this landmark transaction. The deal represents an innovative approach to mobilize transparent, market-oriented financing and is expected to help about 6,000 households gain access to home ownership as part of Proper Africa's whole of government approach. You said, funded media advisors and cross-boundary to provide advisory services that prepared CRRH for a global bond issuance, while DFC provided a credit guarantee allowing investors to access an untapped market opportunity while meeting their risk profile.
For more housing news updates, do well to visit www.africanhousingnews.com. Okay, so you've looked at your financial situation and you've decided that for now, buying a house isn't the right thing to do but renting. But the big question is, how much rent can you afford? Your rent payment should total no more than 30% of your take-home pay. That's a magic number. Is that really visible in this part of the world? What percentage of your earnings can you comfortably save for rent? Let's feel the pause of some Nigerians on Voices on the Streets. Having a set as high percentage for rent, you know, as a Nigerian, with this uh, our economy we have, it's not something one can say. Because mostly the rent we pay in Abuja is annually. So, so you will say 20% per month. And then at the end of 12 months, you might have realized your total rent amount. The rent should not be more than 15% of your of your total income or earnings because there are other factors that you also need to put in place. For instance, you rent your place where you live, where you also work or do business. Then another one, you also pay school fees for the children, you also feed. So, but if the rent takes 15%, for instance, your rent of where you also work, 15%, that's your business area, then your children fees to also take um, nothing less than 15 to 20%. Then we are talking about 45% now. Then other expenses, all other unforeseen expenses will also come. So if you add that, say, as, as maybe 15%, that we're talking about 60%, then your feeding and other things, 50, 20%. So if we have, with all this now, you see, we're looking at 80%. So what should you have at the end of the day? Maybe 20%. So I think 15% is not, um, a, for me, it's okay. My rent, my money now, all for the year, they go for renting. When I was a tenant somewhere in Wuse 2, so what I was doing that every month, I remove not less than 5%. So that by the end of the year, my tenant, my landlord, whether I sell, I don't sell. Some days I will sell more, some days I will sell less. But I make sure I remove that amount. So by the, even sometimes, when I sell more, I remove more than what I'm supposed to. So by the every year, by 11th month, my rent is already somewhere. May at least 20 percent. If you budget 20 percent, it will not even be enough. Saving money monthly for a rent for your shop rent sometimes is very very hard. Uh, for me, I don't do that. What I do is that once it gets to maybe two months to my expiry date, I gather up what I have and just pay up. Some persons save monthly, some weekly. Me, that's how I pay mine. 2.5 million is not, it's not a small money. If I'm to pay rent, depends on how much. Either two bedroom flat or three bedroom flat. Out of the 200,000 salary, I can be keeping like 80,000. And when even if I save enough, much more, then I'll take the amount of rent from it that then I'll have enough again. I'm waiting for the next one year again. So it's better to be on the server side because the landlords, they don't use their rent to play. Ideally, what I normally do, four months or five months to the expiration of my rent, I do make a save, a box, like mine. I'll be putting 5,000, 10,000 naira. If I run it concurrently for five months, Towards the end of the five months, whatever I generated, I will gather it. If it is insufficient to pay my rent, I will make it up. But the funny thing is that this present 2023, the whole thing has changed. The game has changed. Welcome back. Voices on the street there. Just as the saying goes, cut your coat according to your cloth. Undertake only what you have the money or ability to do and no more. 
make plans and decisions that are based on what you have and not what you would like. As Nigerians begin to look forward to Bola Ahmed Tinubu's presidency, there are already high expectations, especially on the capacity of the coming government to tackle the housing shortage in the nation, as well as creating an enabling business environment for this sector to strive. In this report coming up, this stakeholder set agenda for the incoming administration on affordable housing. Take a listen. Following declaration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as winner of the February 25th presidential election, by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Critical stakeholders in the housing sector have continued to speak on their expectations as it relates to various aspects of the economy with a particular interest in affordable housing. Setting agenda for the incoming administration, President of the Real Estate Development Association of Nigeria, Redan, Dr. Ali Wamako, said, Having identified some problems associated with housing, he noted that government has over time paid lip service to the subject of housing, stressing that the Buhari administration had fallen far behind in its promise to provide one million houses every year. They made so much promises that uh, they are going to provide a million houses uh, every year. That is what this government says. But unfortunately, that is not what we are seeing in the ground. And it has not uh, helped in any way, and a lot of building collapse are there. Uh, so we, we believe the government has not taken the bull by the horn in the aspect of providing affordable houses to Nigerians. Speaking to housing development during an exclusive interview, another practitioner in the housing sector and managing partner at Fonahimi Idris and Associates said, given what the president-elect had said about addressing problems associated with the housing sector, he is convinced that with a formidable partnership between private practitioners in the built environment and the incoming administration, the narrative will change considerably for the better. Mr. Idris taxed the incoming administration to avoid giving room for excuses, urging key players in the sector to be more proactive in pursuing all proposals and recommendations previously submitted to government with resolve and commitment request that they should review some of these acts, among them the Land Use Act. So all those things that are tied to constitutions, we can play low on it. What about the one that you can do regarding giving lands to people, to cooperative, to individual, to estate developers, so that the end beneficiary will be... So those are the type of little, little things that should be brought on board. Carbon credit is out in the open air. How can, they've just had climate change commission in Nigeria, you know, about three months ago or thereabouts. So those are the things. We on our own, what can we do? Green building. So a lot, we have to put up our thinking cap and try to run the race now. He further recommended additional measures the government can adopt in its determination to plug housing deficits in the country. The mortgage needs to be fixed as far back as yesterday, yes. But what do you need to fix the mortgage? It's liquidity. How can we use some idle funds, like unclaimed dividends? How can we use it to benefit the mortgage sector? How can we use uh, the asset-backed security for the collateral registry for the mortgage sector? Because affordability will still remain a tall dream. Then they should now look at meeting people at their point of needs. Recognizing the pivotal role of a functional and robust mortgage system to the provision of affordable housing, Dr. Wamako, on his part, makes a case for the incoming government to strengthen mortgage institutions rather than duplicate them. You see, there are lip service on these issues. We have Federal Mortgage Bank, which has been formidably there for over 30 years. You come back and create family homes funds. You come back and create a mortgage refinancing company. All these two all are supposed to be merged with the Federal Mortgage Bank so that they will be able to give intervention funds for the creation of these houses. We have been with the, uh, with the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria for 30 years and we have been providing the supply side of the houses that are being given to workers. And what we are looking for just fund at a single digit interest. We cannot go to the bank and borrow money at 38% or 
and you expect us to provide a house at a affordable cost. It's not better. Affordable fund, affordable houses. If there are no affordable fund, there will be no affordable fund. Housing stakeholders there setting a real estate and housing agenda for the next government. If you're just tuning in, the program is housing development. More to come on the program. Stay with me. Hello, my name is Casey Arrest. I'm the Executive Director of the Center for Affordable Housing Finance in Africa. and We're based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Please keep watching Housing Development Program. It's a great show. You're watching Housing Development. How can the real estate sector sustain the economy, especially now that oil continues to decline? How can the incoming president boost private sector participation? Let's take a listen as Housing Development Advocacy Network Asian Ambassador sets a real estate and housing agenda for the incoming government. We have identified all the problems already. The issue is the implementation, the issue is the execution. And uh, you know, we are in the private sector. One of the obstacles we have always been having is that we don't have a very strong partnership with the government. The partnership with government is, has been rather weak. So this is an area where we have to be more uh, we, have, we have to be more relevant by making sure that the government of the day um, does not play a lip service to housing development and finance uh, in the country. The problem we have in this country, the problem of having good laws and not implementing them not executing them, having problems of, of uh, impunity, uh, bad governance, poor management of resources, you know, corruption, you know, people don't do whatever they like in this country. The broad two areas of issue we have in Nigeria is the issue of hard infrastructure and the issue of soft infrastructure. Some of the time, we, we don't look at such infrastructure as something serious. We don't play around it. We are talking about, oh, building materials are too expensive. Uh, it's difficult to get land. To get sea of is a problem. And money, access to financing. There must be a deliberate effort on the part of government to create a, a living environment for private sector investment in housing. In Rwanda, the government will provide uh, access road to your site, electricity access, ICT access to the site. They will, they will provide um, VAT rebate on your building materials, zero, zero value added tax on building materials. By the time you do all of that, and it's a country today that impunity is almost zero. You cannot isolate the housing sector from the macroeconomy. It's part of the economy. See what is happening in our macroeconomic uh, situation. See the interest rate. NPR is now 17.5. It used to be 9%, 10%, now 17.5. What, what the CBN is telling the banks is that don't give any loan that is less than 17.5 because they still have to add their own margin to it. So how can you have NPR of 17.5 on one hand as it and pushing single digit interest rate for housing? It's not going to happen. See the foreign exchange rate. See the inflation. Look at mortgage default insurance that's making it, uh, that incentivize banks in, the, in Canada to provide mortgage for their people. Because if there's mortgage default insurance that you know that if your, if your money is in jeopardy, you, you can it's already mitigated. You can have recourse to recovery. We've been on it with CBN for AFDB have been promoting that. Mortgage Bank of uh, Association of Nigeria have been promoting that. It has been in CBN for over four years. It are not the the man at the end of affairs. They have no time for his for his job. We need to work on all, all of this area. Any government that is coming will find a way to step up our advocacy to a lobbying level. 
abroad, lobby is legitimate. Lobby is legitimate abroad. US, UK, Canada, Australia. Advocacy without element or lobby will not take us to the promised land. We must be able to say, hey, Mr. Government, this is the way things are being done that is working in other in civilized climes. Can we explore the same thing? We have the resources to do it. Please, can you allow us to do it? We should be able to have um, strength to be able to talk to the government and the government will listen to us. This is how we the only TV Professor Sadebayo, their Hedan founder, and Emmanuel Akinwumi, Hedan ambassador, setting agenda for the incoming president. Now, as the next government takes over in a few months, closing the housing gap and maximizing the real estate sector to contribute significantly to the nation's GDP must form an important priority of the government. Welcome back. You're still watching Housing Development. Moving on, let's take an overview of the past edition of Africa International Housing Show and give you a reason to anticipate on the next edition of the show coming up on the 24th to 27th July 2023 at the International Conference Center, Abuja, Nigeria. Let's have a look. Africa International Housing Show is an annual event that brings together many vendors and exhibitors as well as provides attendees the opportunity to network. The 16th International Housing Show had in attendance over 15,000 people. Africa International Housing Show generally attracts foreign visitors to Nigeria and their host city, Abuja. There is always an influx of visitors and the opportunity to network with thousands of attendees from contractors, developers, architects, government officials, and other construction industry professionals. The annual housing festival features over 500 local and international exhibitors and thousands of quality attendees showcasing the latest projects, developments, investments, and opportunities. The most highly regarded Africa International Housing Show conference and exhibition are aimed at not only bringing together top decision makers in the housing and construction industry, but also to create opportunities for the visitors to witness and experience the latest equipment, machinery, innovation in construction, interior designs, and property development. Why exhibit? It is an opportunity to connect with the right people. The event would bring together the key players in the market, providing exhibitors with valuable face time with both existing clients and potential new business partners. It is also the guaranteed way of ensuring you are meeting the right people for you. Exhibitions are a great way to build relationships, make sales, and gather relevant leads. Face-to-face -face interaction helps your sales team achieve the equivalent of two months of work across a four-day period. Exhibitions are a great way to stand out from the crowd. Build an attention-grabbing stand. Have your best staff on site. Conduct an effective brochure promotion and follow up with ease the contacts you have made. Showcase your latest products and solutions. Take advantage of the high number of visitors and the various demo programs throughout the event. This is also a platform to showcase your latest products and build your brand awareness appeal to all visitors looking for solutions for their 
to their major construction and infrastructure projects by introducing your latest technologies and services. Africa Housing Show is the ideal event for any new products and technology launch. Get registered today to participate on the 17th Africa International Housing Show. Reservation of exhibition space is on first come, first served basis. I'll be That is it on housing development today. Thanks for keeping a date. Let's do this again next week. To watch this episode again and previous ones of housing development, visit the YouTube channel Housing TV Africa. Do well to subscribe. I remain your housing diva, Flora.